I can only speak for myself, but it seems like the um, getting rid of the inhibitions is because we have these inhibitions around sex. Like maybe the thoughts are, I'm not good enough, or my body looks weird at this angle, or this person doesn't necessarily like, that's what it is. That's what, when I had a lack of sexual confidence, that's what would be coming up for me. And from talking to so many people over the years, usually, well, hopefully not usually, but oftentimes the other person or people that you're with, they're also feeling that way. So if everybody's feeling insecure and not confident about their yeah. abilities in the bedroom or about themselves or whatever, they're not even thinking about you and you're just sitting there worried about what they're thinking about you. Um, and I think that's a big part of, I, I'm, I'm hearing from all the panelists here that Co sexual confidence means different things to all four of us, five mm. of us, six of us that are here. Um, and I think that's interesting because I didn't really think about this topic in that regard. I was like, oh, everybody's of course going to be like me and talk about like how they don't think their tits are big enough or whatever. You know what I mean? Um, so it's just, I just wanted to comment on that. I think it's really interesting. All of these different perspectives. No, no way would I dream and this isn't judgment, this is just showing different in personality, no way would I dream of um, having sex on ecstasy or anything like that because I would feel like I wouldn't be myself and then that would make me feel not confident. Mm. Oh, it makes a lot of sense. Have you taken ecstasy? Not ecstasy, no. Good point, PT. Good point. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nicole, I thought that you were you were bringing in uh, some, some of the chat. Is there some chatter out there? Yeah, I was just highlighting a couple of our audience responses. Um, I think I'll show this one. I think it really relates to what um, everyone has been saying and sort of Reba's point that kind of everyone has their different level or different, I think, definition of what confidence is. And my question is maybe where that where the overlap of confidence and comfort is, or like, are they the same word? Are they different words yeah. that just overlap? Um, it sort of reminded me when Kevin talked about um, feeling more comfortable flirting over writing. So then maybe that's like a more of a comfortable language. Like, where is your comfort overlapping with your confidence? Yeah. I like this. I, really I think there's something to be learned by something, Reba, that you said that people don't think about us that much. In many areas of life, we think they're many areas of life. We think they're they're judging us and they're thinking about how we're doing, and they're not. They're thinking about themselves, and I think it probably also goes for sex that we we overthink how much we're being gauged at every moment. We're not. Mm -hmm. People care about themselves more than they do about thinking about us. It yeah. does. It does make me think, though, of uh, of what Kevin was saying, and, and Reba, if I could bring you in on this too, because Kevin, you were saying like you're a writer, and on the apps, if you come across somebody who's not a writer, if, basically, if you're not feeling that connection, and Reba, I know you re recently told a story at a show about being on a date where you just weren't feeling that connection, um, and that, that seems like it relates to the comment that Nicole brought up. I'm trying to tie everything together, where it, where confidence can be almost playing off each other and, and building it up with the person that you are engaging with, that if they're engaging with you a little bit, like that helps you feel like, oh, I can be myself. And then maybe they're more themselves and then you're more yourself um, as opposed yeah. to just saying, you know, like, well, yeah, Reva, please. No, well, I also wanted to ask Kelly, um, cause I think this might be related. Kelly was just sort of like, yeah, I'm confident in the bedroom and that's mm -hmm. that. And I but wonder- There's a story behind that. <laughs> yeah, I know your story, if it's the same story that I'm thinking of. But um, I wonder if part of it, too, is just kind of fake it till you make it. If Kelly presents as like, I'm confident, then then she's confident, whether she's co whether whether you're that to begin with or not. Like if I walk into a room fully telling myself that I'm confident, even though I have uh, inhibitions or whatever, um, then confidence is sexy and attractive to most people that I know anyway. Um, and so you're accomplishing what confidence would do, I guess, by just convincing yourself. Am I making sense? Acting, basically. I mean, well, I feel that's where it starts from the beginning. You have to kind of believe in yourself in order for anything to work. 
So like from, from the beginning of my sexual history, I kind of groomed myself into loving myself first, what? loving all of my flaws, good or bad. Because growing up, I was always told, you're not pretty, you're mm. not good enough. Mm. So with going through those things, when I was a young girl, I started learning to love myself. Fast forward, once I got into college, the boyfriend I had at the time, he was into like kinky stuff and, and BDSM and, and fetish type of um, fantasies. Mm -hmm. At the time, I didn't know what, I really didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. So I researched it. I researched it. I looked up uh, different VHS tapes and I started noticing that I had an interest in domination. Mm. So I decided to be a dominatrix. And I think from that experience, then I started learning more about sexuality, physically, psychology wise, to know in depth why, why do certain people tick the way they tick. And I think that's pretty much what's gotten me so far in life with my sexual experiences with really getting down to the bottom of things.